everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm the founder of Code of the Future and today we're going to be continuing with the Rust course where I'm teaching you all about Rust for beginners. Before we dive into the tutorial, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you are new to the channel. But with that said, I'll put my glasses on and I'll move you onto the screen. Okay, so if you have been following my Rust tutorial videos, you'll know that in the last video we looked at data types and learn all about why data types are so specific to Rust and what properties they have. Now, this video isn't necessarily, I suppose, incorporated into this programming course, um, but what I wanted to show you was a different IDE. Now, I realise I should have done this when I started the, the kind of tutorial, um, but this is just an aside to show you that you can actually, if you use something like VS Code, you can get some shortcuts that uh, and extensions that allow you to check whether you're, you, know, you have any errors straight away. Now, if you're used to my channel, you will know that I've programmed in Python before uh, and I use PyCharm. Now, PyCharm comes up with errors along the side if you make a mistake. And I just want to show you that you can actually have the same, you know, the equivalent uh, in Rust. So that's what I'm just going to show you in this short video. It's not necessarily part of the programming course, but if you are going to be coding in Rust and you want a little helping hand when doing so, uh, this is, you know, this is this is the video for you. So what I'm going to do is just show you where you can download VS Code. This isn't going to be talking you through the whole download, you know, Visual Studio Code or anything. There's a video on my channel which I'll link in the description uh, for for you to follow that if you need to. But essentially, you just go to this link here uh, and you'll download the equivalent VS Code. And I'm sure if any of you are used to coding, you'll be used to kind of installing things. Uh, and yeah, pretty much setting up VS Code is really, really easy. You just download whichever operating system you're on and then open it up from your downloads and yeah, it's there, ready to go. So what I will do is I'm just going to open VS Code, uh, which I have down here somewhere, there it is, and we'll open it and then, then I'll just open a specific... Oh, we already have one. I've already got it open. Awesome. So just before, you know, we, we had this Rust Tutorials folder here, uh, and then we had all of the tutorial one, well, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And I apparently loaded that on VS Code before, so awesome. If you don't know how to do that, then you'll just kind of file and open and open a new folder. Um, it's, well, it's pretty simple. So what I want to show you is an extension that helps make Rust a little bit easier uh, in terms of, you know, spotting errors. Uh, and also things like running your program. Now you'll notice here I have a little run and this will run my uh, Rust file here and it works down the bottom here. So just before I dive in and show you the extension, VS Code is really handy. I was going to use VS Code as you know the IDE. The reason I didn't is because it can get a little bit conf confusing uh, as beginners when I start showing you things like variables and I'm not showing you how to assign them to certain data types just yet. VS Code does that automatically um, and you'll see what I mean when I move on to a different folder. So that's the reason I didn't use VS Code. The way VS Code works is very similar to Sublime Text. You have everything down this side and down this side. You have your main RS file up here. We have our main RS file up here. Um, and down here is your terminal. So instead of having to open up terminal from your operating system like I have been doing, terminal is right down here and you can write things like cargo run, which I don't think will work because I'm not CD'd into this just yet, but yeah, it's because I haven't CD'd into the correct uh, directory. But that's fine. But anyway, you have cargo, to, you have the terminal down here, sorry. Uh, you can click run and it will run for you. So if you fancy changing from Sublime Text to VS Code, now that we've learned some, you know, fundamentals, then go for it. But what I'm going to show you is the extension. So we're just going to click this down here. And all we're going to type in is Rust. And we'll see what pops up. Now, this was certified uh, and this was what most people used. It's not let me go on to it. I'm trying to hover. It's not let me hover <laughs> over it, but I'm trying to show you the warning error. But as you can see, hopefully you can read it, um, it's deprecated, so you can't use it anymore. Instead, you're going to go to this Rust Analyzer, and this is the extension that I recommend. Uh, and I'll show you some of the features of it afterwards. There should be uh, an install button. Um, here I have it uninstalled, but there should be an install button around here. Just install it, uh, and everything should be running smoothly. I do have a, a note uh, to myself, was when I first did this i had had vs code on my laptop for quite a while i'd used it previously maybe a year ago and 
I hadn't updated it because I wasn't using it. I was too busy on PyCharm doing Python things, of course. And yeah, so so for me it didn't work and it came up with loads of errors and then I just re-downloaded VS Code, a brand new version of it, uh, and it worked perfectly fine. So if you do come up with an error, then try and you know just check you've got the latest version of VS Code installed. But as I said, just click the install button, should install all fine for you, uh, and then I'll show you what it does in terms of coding. So let's go to... In fact, let's go to tutorial six because we did data types and I'll just cross off terminal for now. Okay, so here we assigned a few things um, and we said, okay, well, let X be an I8. Now, if you don't, if you get rid of that, notice how it automatically filled that in for me. Now I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. If it lets me, I think it's, my computer's lagging slightly. The zoom in feature doesn't work quite as well as with Sublime Tech. So. Anyway, so let me just get rid of what we did. So previously we had, okay, let X or underscore X be an I8 um, and that's 12. Okay, so we did that. Now, if you didn't do that and didn't assign it, then watch the magic happen there. This Rust Analyzer extension fills it in for you. So, the, you know, this is the reason why I didn't start in VS Code, because I had this extension, um, because it may be a bit confusing for people that, you know, were new to Rust. But that's a handy feature of Rust. This Rust Analyzer helps you with errors. Um, a little bit like PyCharm, if you're familiar with PyCharm, little things will pop up on the side here, maybe in orange or yellow, if you have kind of a slight error. So I reckon, to be honest there, I've just deleted the semicolon, which... I'm sure if you remember from my previous videos, semicolon seems to be um, a bit of a pain for me because I always seem to forget them. But straight away you get an error up there and then you hover over it and it says syntax error, expected semicolon, and of course pop the semicolon in and it works fine. So this was just a video to show you that you can download VS Code and then you can download, uh, install the Rust Analyzer extension. And it's just a handy way of keeping track of your code before you cargo run it. Um, you know, I guess what we did here, if I was to do the same and got rid of the semicolon there, we wouldn't, no error would come up because we don't have an extension or we don't have kind of a, a thing that tells us whether things are right or wrong in Rust in Sublime Text. That being said, I will stick with Sublime Text unless I think otherwise, you know, unless I think there's something um, worth mentioning in VS Code. The reason for that is just, again, as we move on to more complex things, um, kind of Rust will automatically fill things in and I don't want it to automatically fill things in and, and you not understand what's going on. So I'm gonna stick with VS with Sublime Text, but yeah, if you want to move to VS Code, by all means go for it um, and download that Rust Analyzer extension. So that was the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you aren't already subscribed to the channel. Comment if you fancy commenting. I also have a donation page and a Patreon set up for exclusive behind the scenes footage, uh, if you fancy checking that out. Um, but yeah, as I said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.